Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live episode for NLCD 2023 series. So this is Dr. Josephine Grace Rohatan, also known as your diet doctor. And today we will talk about a common concern ng ating community and even yung mga hindi pa member ng low carb but must knows when it comes to to health because kung ano daw yung health natin is actually just secondary from kung ano yung kinakain natin. So tonight, we will talk about food allergy and sensitivity. Ano ang iba't ibang testing to check kung meron kang food allergy or food intolerance. Ano-ano ang pag-interpret natin ng mga test results at marami pang iba. And kasabay na dyan, while we discuss the different kinds of food allergy, I will also show you yung result ng aking food sensitivity test. Yan. So, yan yung result ng aking food sensitivity testing. So, tulad ng ating food list, meron din danger list, caution list, and safe list. However, if ever you will consider na magpapukuha din kayo ng food sensitivity testing, I, I will help you kung paano ito maging even safer because... I know before, meron ako mga pasyente and also I have friends na kumuha before ng food sensitivity test because they have asthma, marami silang food allergies, and even they followed yung kanilang personalized na food sensitivity test results ay hindi pa rin gumaling yung kanilang sakit. Yung asthma nila, ganun pa rin, although kumonti lang yung kanilang mga allergic reactions but generally their health is still not that improved and I will tell you why at kung paano ito may improve na hindi lang tayo dapat mag-base lang sa test results but also really listen to our body. So if you are ready, make sure na, na share nyo na yung video natin because I'm sure hindi lahat alam na we are already live. Make sure na nakafollow and nakamark as favorite yung ating page in Facebook, Diet Doctora, the uh, LCF Center, and of course, yung low-carb feasting and fasting community natin. Hello po sa lahat. Also, join Life Without Tries, our Facebook page, NLCD, and of course, our masterclass groups. And hi din sa ating mga YouTube subscribers na parating online when it comes to our live episodes. So, Ano yung unahin natin? We will start with different types of allergies. Make sure na na-share nyo na ito ha, in your timeline and also naka-save na and also share to your family and friends. So food allergy, anong pagkakaiba ng food allergy and sensitivity or tolerance? So food allergy, ito talaga yung nagre-react yung katawan mo in certain items or certain food items na hindi naman supposedly harmful sa ating katawan. So, this reaction is just specific to you. Ikaw lang yung nagre-react nito. But, we already know now na marami pa lang certain groups na what we call as common allergen. So, kahit pa specific sa iyo yung allergic reaction na ito, pero ngayon, we now know na marami pa lang tao na commonly allergic dito. And sometimes, kahit pa low-carb sila, kahit pa low-carb yung mga food na ito, you can still be allergic to them. Especially na ang allergy, na ang component ng allergy that our body reacts to is actually protein. So yung protein part, certain kinds of protein ay sensitive yung ating katawan. That's why we react to it. Common na mga reaction would be pangangate and then yung nag inflame yung kanilang mouth, namumula, and then yung pinaka-severe nga yung anaphylaxis. So kapag mamaga yung iyong throat no or yung lalamunan and yung daanan ng iyong hangin your airway that can actually be very very dangerous so for those na merong allergy na immediate talaga ay nahihirapan silang huminga that is an emergency so that is what we call immediate na hypersensitivity response and you should be careful of that so when it comes to food, alam natin na meron din ibang food na hindi automatic, hindi man, hindi man siya ganon ka nag elicit ng allergic response. But if you eat too much of it, nagkakaroon ito ng 
certain kind of reaction sa katawan namin, natin. So, meaning, you are not tolerant to it. An example of i-compare natin, ha? So, yung food allergy talaga. So, for example, allergic ka sa shrimp. Kapag kumain ka ng shrimp, bigla ka talagang mangangate. So, mamumula yung bibig mo, lalaki yung dila mo. So, yung iba nga, nahihirapan pang huminga if it's really severe kind of, of allergic na reaction. Whereas, for example, yung intolerance naman, so like lactose intolerance, yung nasa milk, kung konti-konti lang, hindi naman nagkakaroon ng reaction sa tiyan ng mga lactose intolerant. Pero kapag eto ay napaparami yung kanilang inom, so nagbibuild up yung lactose na hindi kayang i-digest ng tiyan ng mga may lactose intolerant. So nangyayari dito, nasa loob lang ng kanilang tiyan yung lactose and eventually, eto ay nadadigest ng bacteria, hindi ng tao mismo. So, when the bacteria ferments or processes yung mga parts ng lactose na hindi kayang i-digest ng taong merong lactose intolerant, nagkakos ito ng bloating. So, nagkakaroon ng gas production. And of course, kapag hindi ito nga na-process, pwede itong mag into diarrhea. So, those are the two examples for us to differentiate kung ano yung pagkakaiba ng allergy and tolerance or sensitivity. So, although ang sensitivity, minsan ginagamit din siya when it comes to food tolerance or food allergy, but know that allergy talaga ay nagkakaroon ng immediate reaction, whereas for tolerance naman, hindi kaya ng katawan na iproseso ito. Iba't iba yung rason, and one common would be the absence of enzymes na to digest it, and there's also another cause, and that is na nagkakaroon ng long-term reaction yung katawan na consider niya yung certain food item na yon as kalaban, as uh, something na nakakasama sa katawan when in fact, supposedly, hindi naman sana. And that also has something to do with gut health. Kaya kailangan make sure natin na what we eat is just what is good for us and what is good for our gut para mas marami din tayong food na matotolerate. So, Two things na kailangan nating malaman sa types of allergy and tolerance or sensitivity. One is yung immediate kind of allergy. So yung immediate hypersensitivity response, paano ito malalaman? Again, yun yung immediately nagre-react ka talaga. After mong kumain, mangangati ka na. Yung iba mahihirapang huminga or nag lumalaki or nagkakaroon ng inflammation ng kanilang bibig, yung kanilang oral cavity and that is the common form of alam na alam mong allergic ka. So try to list down or recall the food na kung saan ka allergic. So common allergens would be peanuts, merong iba eggs and chicken and then shrimp. And then meron ding iba na allergic sa talong pero hindi naman lahat. So those are the common allergens. Marami pang iba niyan, but you should know kung ano, saan ka immediate na allergic. So, saan ka nagkakaroon ng immediate hypersensitivity response regardless kung ang food group na yan ay low carb or high carb nasa safe, danger, or caution list ng ating JGC Rojo food list. If you feel na meron kang immediate hyper sensitivity response dyan, kahit nasa safe list pa yan, ay kailangan mo itong iwasan. So, that's the important part. Kung meron nang itong testing, so merong laboratory testing, the common would be IgE. So, IgE. Ig is immunoglobulin. It's a kind of antibody para siyang mga sundalo sa loob ng ating katawan that's being created kapag meron itong na feel na something dangerous na pumasok sa ating katawan. So IgE na antibodies is in charge for immediate hypersensitivity response. So specific yon na test. It can also have uh, that spectrum ng mga gluten allergy. So kung meron kayong celiac disease or gluten allergy, may allergy, may allergy sa mga wheat flour and other grains na merong gluten, that might also lead into hypersensitivity response na makakain ka lang kahit isang crackers lang yung kinain nyo but it's containing gluten, eh, pwede kang mag-diarrhea, pwede kang mag-bloating, pwede sumakit yung chan mo and yung iba nga sa sobrang sensitive nila to gluten, kahit makahawak lang sila ng mga 
mga bagay o lutuan na kung saan nakaluto yung hindi gluten-free na pagkain ay pwedeng mga te yung kanilang katawan. So para nagkakaroon sila ng contact dermatitis or allergy sa balat na nagre-react na. So ang testing ng immediate hypersensitivity na te na mga kind of allergy would be either through blood, titingnan kung ang IgE level na reaction sa kada pagkain or meron din itong skin testing. So, skin prick, nilalagay-lagay dyan. Usual na ginagamit lang sa skin prick would be the allergens like in asthma. So, yung mga dust mites and mga pollen, yun yung common. But there's also a kind na for food naman. So, that's the first type of allergy and tolerance or sensitivity sa pagkain that you should know. And the second type would be something that is direct but delayed. So, meaning, ito ay direktang cause ng pagkain na yan. However, hindi agad-agad nakikita yung kanilang reaksyon. And you can test it via food tolerance test or food sensitivity test na yung chinecheck naman is IgG. Diba? Ganina, IgE, diba? So, IgE for immediate response and for somewhat delayed response is IgG. IgG is the most abundant na kind of sundalo sa ating katawan one when it comes to protecting our body. Ito rin yung mga chinecheck kung ikaw ay immune na sa virus, for example, or certain diseases. And it can also be measured when it comes to food. So, yan yung aking pinakuha lately. So, this is my IgG na food sensitivity test. So, mind you, na maraming nagpapakuha nito and they feel like kapag meron na silang kanilang sariling food group na alam na nila kung saan sila sensitive at hindi sensitive, ay magiging okay na okay na yung kanilang health. However, we see now na dapat pala you should have the basic of low carb first before you follow this. Kasi for example, yung normal foods for me na hindi ako nagre-react dito is actually sobrang dami na mga very high carb food. So, kung ako ay hindi knowledgeable about low carb, isipin ko okay lang kung kumain ng, tingnan mo dito, cane sugar, oat, tapos meron pang mga soya bean, meron pa ditong, I think merong rice dito. So, and so many other foods na alam mong mataas sa carbohydrates, mataas sa starch. Pero kung hindi mo alam, you can feel na you can eat as much or as many sa mga food group na ito. Kaya yung friend that I told you and some of my patients that I know na nagpakuha nito, hindi pa rin totally gumagaling. Kasi pinapakuha ito usually specifically sa merong mga chronic inflammatory conditions. May mga sakit kasi na walang alam natin ngayon na wala pa talagang gamot. So mga autoimmune disease, certain kinds of chronic inflammation sa skin. So wala silang gamot but we now know na pwede itong mag yung kanilang reaction. So the severity ay pwede mag if you also avoid triggers. So food is actually a very, very, very common trigger. However, this test is only tackling about the direct and delayed na reaction ng mga pagkain. So isa-isahin natin ito so that you will understand. So say for example... Dinivide nila yung mga pagkain dito into number one food group would be, yan. So, dito ang food group na yan, it's egg and dairies. So, sa egg and dairies, I'm not really surprised, pero it's a truth no, na kailangan ko na talaga gagawin. I always have this suspicion. But now, na-prove na na I'm really intolerant to milk. So, Three kinds of milk here. Usually, it's real milk yung pinag-uusapan natin. Hindi yung almond milk or coconut milk, yung totoong milk talaga. So, sheep, goat, and cow milk. Yung especially cow's milk, dyan yung may pinakamataas na IgG response. And then sa egg, also, I'm allergic to egg white. Or not really allergic, but intolerant. Okay? So, I'm intolerant to egg white, pero good thing, ang act egg yolk is 
okay. So, wala akong violent reaction sa egg yolk. Whereas sa egg white, medyo mataas. So, kapag more than 29 na, it's already considered as as elevated na IgG reaction. And egg white is 85. So, kaya ngayon, kapag kumakain ako ng itlog, puro yellow na lang. And I also don't complain, except that it's magastos, no? Kasi konti lang yung yellow. But I really love egg yolk than egg white din. So, meron akong excuse ngayon na hindi na ako kakain ng egg white. Although we know that protein is uh, egg white is mostly composed of protein and protein is generally good for us but if this kind of protein produces um some kind of intolerance sa katawan nyo, then it might not be that good so that's why yun this is something that's surprising but i'm happy na in case gusto kong mag milk meron pa rin akong option so buffalo milk i don't have any negative reaction to it very very well tolerated so buffalo or kalabaw so gatas na kalabaw so i think i will start looking for suppliers ng ng karabaw milk and also kesong puti so because that is something na i can tolerate however nakakalungkot lang all the milk, especially the majority of the milk na meron tayo dito is from cow's milk and its derivatives. Kasama yung mga cheese, yogurts, and other dairies are actually mostly from cow's milk. And that is also the reason why nasa caution list natin yan. Because as much as we want to believe na we are tolerant to milk, marami talaga sa atin ang hindi tolerant to milk. Because you know why? Milk is supposedly for the young ones, sa mga bata lang yan, sa mga adults na gusto lang uminom ng milk. Generally, our body actually develop over time na hindi na talaga sana-sanay uminom ng milk. It's just that yung commercial milk is now widely available na sobrang dami na ng mga commercial saying na essential ito, but it's actually not very essential. So other kinds of dairy and egg na uh, types there, so alpha-lactalbumin and beta-lactoglobulin are also different kinds of mga proteins, so specific proteins to, and also casein. However, hindi nila nakit na lagay dito yung whey. So usually yung uh, milk proteins is composed of whey protein and casein. So, walang whey dito, but most likely, it is the one that's elevated in milk. Okay? So, mataas yan. So, kasi spinesify nila yung casein dito. So, mostly, the reaction that you will get from the other milk here are mostly from whey. When I took whey protein isolate last year, to increase my muscle bulk and when I was going to the gym, I also feel na meron talagang certain degree of inflammation. So that's why hindi ako nakatagal ng more than two months of taking whey protein isolate. So dami-dami kong binili na hindi ko na rin nainom. So yun, it's mostly because I have intolerance to milk protein. So that's for eggs. Dairy and eggs. So, second food group dito would be green. So, eto maganda kasi spinesify nila. So, dalawang types of food groups yung grains. Merong gluten-containing at meron ding gluten-free. Okay? So, gluten-containing. So, lahat dito, actually, for me, it doesn't matter kung nasa red or nasa green sila. Because grains in general, kahit pa kuskus pa yan na considered as high fiber, it is still very high in starch. So kapag mataas ito sa starch, eventually, ito ay tataas pa rin sa glucose load sa katawan. Kahit pa yung kanilang glycemic index ay a little, a little lower than rice, a little lower than wheat, Pero yung overall impact nito ay mataas pa rin as compared sa hindi mo sila kakainin. So, dito meron silang sa gluten-free na mga kinds of grains, nag lang yung barley and wheat. So, speaking of barley, hindi po ako nag-endorse ng any 
kind of barley products. So, gumaga illegal po na gumagamit yung mga videos natin yan. So, if you are a true low-carb follower, alam mong hindi yan totoo. So, for me, kahit pa considered as nasa green list yung wheat bran, yung rye, oat, and then others, couscous, drum, ano yun? Gladin. Yung gladin pala is just gluten. So, meron silang ano dito, note dito na yung may asterisk is kahit pa daw low dito yung reaction mo for gluten, you have to really get a specific na test for gluten only para malaman talaga if you're really tolerant to it. Pero I will not get that na dahil hindi naman talaga akong kumakain ng grains because they are under our caution bordering na danger list. So usually, as we go back muna, my hierarchy sa food list on what is safe for me is yung nasa food list talaga natin on the safe list. So kahit pa na dito ay nasa green sila as okay sila, pero kung sa ating low-carb food list ay nasa yellow na siya or nasa red, so automatic out na yan. Okay? So, but I'm just discussing to you para makita ninyo how these tests are done. So, another green group would be the gluten-free group. So, gluten-free, meron dyang buckwheat, amaranth, and then, yan, nandyan yung rice and tapioca. So, those are considered as gluten-free na sources of starch. And I'm only sensitive to corn. So, dito, sa corn lang ako sensitive. But now, alam natin na we really have to avoid all of these. Kasi nga, one cup of rice lang is already equivalent to 10 to 12 teaspoons of white sugar. So, kailangan talaga natin yan i-avoid. So, whether gluten-free or gluten-containing yung ating, ating grains, we need to avoid that because that is considered as mataas sa starch. And sa ating types of allergies and tolerance sensitivity, yung starch and glucose might be indirect and delayed yung kanilang sensitivity response sa ating katawan. Indirect dahil it could be related to the inflammation o pamamaga na dulot ng sobrang pagtaas ng insulin. At yung sobrang pagtaas ng insulin naman ay secondary lang sa chronic na elevation or pagtaas din ng glucose sa katawan. So these are the foods that are already in our caution and danger list. Okay? So, kahit pa nasa green list sila sa result ng laboratory, it doesn't mean that they are already safe for you. Okay? So, the next food group would be, yan, fruits. So, fruits, alam na natin ngayon that it's very high in fructose and glucose. So, kahit pa mata mababa yung aking IgG response. So, yung aking antibody response to majority of these fruits. And I'm also surprised actually kasi sa ibang mga pasyente na nakita ko na meron ganito ang result, sobrang daming pula. Sobrang daming intol sa sobrang dami nilang intolerance. And I feel like maybe it has something to do with their body na already inflamed na. So, it's inflamed na to begin with. So, they are actually more intolerant and more sensitive na sa mga pagkaing that's supposedly neutral. And the sad part is, kung sino pa yung maraming sensitivity, sila pa yung parating kumakain din ng mga pagkaing inflammatory na might be indirect and delayed. So, kasama na yan yung fruits. So, yan. So, fruits... Generally, it's all safe for me according to this list. But for me, of course, the safest lang would be sandito. Avocado. And we also have strawberry, some berries. Yung nalungkot lang ako dito, yung plum. So yung plum uh, or yan yung fruit na kung saan ang galing yung kiamoy. So kiamoy, it's very sour. It's something that I really like. 
Pero yun pala, it's also low carb. Kaya nga lang, I'm sensitive to it. So, maybe if I will eat that, I can just eat the fermented type. Or, pakonti-konti lang talaga. And good thing also, kasi hindi naman yan available sa Pilipinas. So, it's at least of my concern. I only eat that when it's available, usually abroad. Especially when we last went to Japan. Yan, maraming plum doon. But for other fruits, meron namang low carb na hindi talaga we don't always promote as low carb no kasi may mga iba na the moment they hear that it's okay akala nila pang unlimited na so no so for example guava so guava especially yung local na guava or yung puti yung hindi yung red yung laman na hindi ganoon ka tamis they can be low carb santol is also low carb okay and manggang hilaw in moderation, wag lang marami. Kasi ang problem din sa fruits when we eat them, if hindi ikaw if hindi if ikaw ang nagbabalat or ikaw ang bumili or ikaw ang nagse-serve, you might overeat them. Unless if it's paid or naka-slice na at marami kayong naghahati. So, you might be able to eat in moderation. Kaya nasa caution list yung fruits, all fruits in general. So, pina Make, uh, we just made it easy, but generally, low carb here is avocado, and then uh, lemon is also low carb. Lime is also low carb kasi hindi mo naman kaya sigurong kumain ng maraming maraming ganyan. So raisin is dried grape, no? And it's very high carb. So high carb yan. Mango, high carb. Banana, sobrang high carb yan. So, again, kahit pa dalawa lang yung naka-red sa aking fruit list, but I will just eat just few of them. Avocado ko meron magpre-prepare, but for me, generally, hindi rin ako nakakain na regularly. But yun, you already know that when it comes to fruit, they should be in our caution list kasi nasa third type siya. Na pwede siya mag cause ng indirect but delayed kind of inflammation from too much fructose. Okay? I hope that, that is clear. So, next food groups would be vegetables. So, the vegetables there, you again make a compare and contrast. Okay? Compare and contrast mo sa ating JGC Rojo food list na you can download in our website, the jgrtanmd.com, at makikita nyo dyan kung ano yung common na safe, sa safe list natin, na green list, and in your own personal na sensitivity. So, but for me, generally, hindi ko na ako na more problema nito, but because seldom do I eat vegetables. So, paminsan-minsan lang talaga. So, yan. So, sa cabbage, meron pa different kinds of cabbage. Merong red at yung merong white. At yung white, meron akong mas increase na reaction. 17. Although still in the green side, safe side, but the red, less than 15. So, safer pala yung red or purple cabbage for me. So, yan. So, potato, pea, beans. So, these are all high carb. So, no worries about that kasi nasa caution list na natin and danger list na natin yan in our food group, in our JGC Rojo food list, kaya iniiwasan na din. So, others here na green dito, considered as safe dito, but I don't eat would be yung ibang mga high carb, like yung mga lentils. And then, soya bean. Soya bean, hindi talaga siya high carb, but it's inflammatory because majority of soy now are product na ng GMO. Hindi na, halos, maybe nasa less than 1% na lang ng soy products ang hindi gawa ng GMO. And squash, sweet potato, quinoa. So, these are all mga... Matataas sa starch. Okay? So, marami. And others, for others na who are fond of eating cauliflower and broccoli, try to take note. 
Kasi it's also a common na direct but delayed na sensitivity. Na sensitivity. So yung iba nga, tumataas yung kanilang uric acid with cauliflower. So try to make sure and listen to your body. So nasa kabilang page na tayo. So yan. Fish and seafood. So nasa fish and seafood option na tayo. Hindi ko alam kung ano yung isa na yan. So since hindi ko siya kilala, so maybe it's a type of sea seashells or something. Pero sa common na mga seafood is the shrimp, uh, crabs. Meron lang akong ano, borderline reaction to clam. So, so yung mga clam, yung mga shells, no? shellfish. And meron akong elevated reaction to squid. So sa squid pa lang. Buti na lang kasi yung masarap na squid na calamari is high carb naman mostly yon kasi may breading. So, iniiwasan ko din yon So, this is all the more reason why I need to avoid that. Pero good thing, of course, konting-konti lang talaga. Halos walang sensitivity to any fish. And I'm happy na hindi ako sensitive to shrimp. And yung mga gusto kong mga isda dito. So, mackerel. And walang milkfish dito. Walang milk fish, pero yan. All the fish, very safe. And here, yung favorite nating area ng food group, meat. And I'm so happy na wala talaga akong hypersensitivity or intolerance to meat. Usually, sa meat naman, yung chicken lang, yung merong may mga ibang sensitivity. Siya yung pinaka-common. But wala pa akong kilalang taong allergic sa pork unless it's a personal preference, usually religious preference, or allergic sa beef. So, beef, pork, duck, no? They are all very, very safe. Turkey. So, yan. If you think you have hypersensitivity to chicken, so might as well avoid. Especially, karamihan sa mga chicken ngayon are no longer organic. Okay? It might be a little pricey, but sometimes kung merong ganong option, I go for yung mga free-range, antibiotic-free, and then organic chicken. Hindi ko lang alam kung ano yung kinakain nila talaga, but maybe it's better than yung mga... Ano talaga? Yung farm na mga, na mga chicken na very much loaded with antibiotics and other medicine. So, meat is the safest. Yung meat lang talaga na section, yung walang kahit anong kulay. Di ba nakakatawa? So, herbs and spices, everything. Di ba? Usually, the herbs and spices is nasa, ano naman natin, green list naman natin yan. It's in our safe list. Because they are low-carb, kakaunti lang naman yung kakailanganin natin at hindi naman talaga napaparami talaga yung nalalagay natin. And the only one na meron akong yellow reaction dyan would be ginkgo. So, ginkgo or ginkgo biloba, yun ba yun? So, ginkgo. And good thing, hindi na ako gumagamit yan. So, that is something nice. Dito lang merong isang nakakalungkot. So, sa nuts and seeds na tayo, I think si... Si Ninang Annie Things specify that na stick to the safe list always sa ating food. And kung sa simula pa lang, and it's also something that I believe in, you might want to stay away from nuts and seeds kahit pa low-carb sila because it's a common allergen. So it's a common allergen na nagre-react tayo because yung seed is a very vital part ng mga plant. So it's also loaded with mga toxins and yung mga chemicals na, of course, for the plant, they're trying to protect it kasi binhi nila yun eh. Yun yung mag, mag-produce ng kanilang next generation. So, they are protecting the, these nuts and seeds. So, if they are not properly processed, hindi na-remove yung mga pills at hindi na-luto, baka mataas yung kanilang phytotoxin na content. And kaya nga, marami silang kind of protein that might react to the human body. So, dalawa lang yung nag sa akin. And good thing, they're also the ones that I avoid because they are already high carb. So, among the nuts na hindi lang peanut, okay? So, pistachio and cashew nut are starchy. 
masarap sila but they are starchy. Mataas yung kanilang starch content and they, they can be high carb especially kung kumakain ka nito na pangmaramihan na once you pop, you can't stop. And eto lang yung nakakalungkot for me, yung almond. So I always have this inkling, no? I always felt na hindi talaga ako ganun kahiyang sa almond. When I did DCR healing protocol mm, two years ago na siguro yun, na I it healed my gut issue. So, yung leaky gut ko na healed. But part of that is nag-avoid ako ng nuts including almonds. And that's only the time na naging okay talaga ang lahat. And from time to time, I still eat almonds, pero pa konti konti na lang. Especially na majority of the low-carb goodies, low-carb na mga breads na binibenta are mostly com- coming from almond flour. So, I just eat them in moderation. What's my parang technique? How I eat yung mga low-carb goodies and treats na yun? When I eat them, I actually consider them as high-carb. So, paano yan? How does that work? So, when I consider them as high-carb, kung kakain ako sa kanila, konting-konti lang. So, halos mga tikim-tikim lang. Kahit pa low-carb sila. Because as much as possible, ayaw kong masanay sa mga non-essential na mga food that might contain some inflammation. So that's why I think it's good for you to have an idea kung saan kayo sensitive. So now I know, mas magiging cautious ako knowing that I'm not that tolerant when it comes to almonds. And meron ditong mga miscellaneous, agar-agar, cola nut, yeast, brewer's yeast. Yan, dyan din ako mga sensitive but good thing hindi ko rin sila normally ginagamit and since I commonly cook food na sa bahay lang, so wala din yan sa ating pantry, so wala din yan sa ating condiments. So, yun yung ating food sensitivity test. So, this is IG, IgG test ha. If ever you want, just message our admins. Bibigyan ko kayo ng contact number ng gumagawa ng test na ito. So, this test can cost uh, ranging from 14,000 to 30,000. Depende kung saan nyo ito kukunin. So, this one is directly from the laboratory na gumagawa nito here in Metro Manila free yung home service nila. Yung home service lang yung free, hindi yung test. Kaya talaga. So, free lang yung home service. So, hindi na kailangan umalis ng bahay. Sila yung pupunta. They will extract blood. And after few days, maybe a week or so, mag, mag, magbibigay na sila ng results in your email address. So, this one cost 14920 So, almost 15000 so, yan na yung cheapest so far here. And they will test 200 plus kind of food kung saan ka sensitive. So, I think yung pinaka-importante for me dito would be the objective na evidence na hindi talaga ako tolerant to milk because it's milk and dairies are in our caution list, di ba? So, caution list. But you want, since it's very yummy, you might want to have some of it. Pero this one, naiiniwala kasi ako na knowledge talaga will empower you to do the right thing. So, at least this one, mas merong push to avoid them. And also, almond, so coconut flour na lang siguro yung mostly kakain ko, if ever meron akong kakaining mga low-carb treats. So, yan. So, again, types of allergy, tolerance, sensitivity. So, yung immediate, yung nangangate ka agad-agad na sumasakit agad yung chan mo, nasusuka ka, nagtatae ka, namumula ka, or nahihidapan kang huminga. So, those are the foods na part ng mga immediate na hypersensitivity. Yung mga direct but delayed, it can be from IgG. So, long-term na accumulated intake. So, ng pagkain na yun. And the last would be the indirect and delayed. So, common would be yung mga carbohydrate starch. Rice, pasta, noodles, tinapay, na kahit kamote, and certain fruits na mga matatamis, matataas sa fructose. Kasi yung sugar na yon later on, would spike your insulin or magkakaroon ng insulin resistance and that can lead to inflammation. So that's the indirect and delay. 
Okay? So, food groups to watch out for, if ever. Magpapatest kayo. So, check nyo yung dairy and egg area. Especially yung grains, regardless whether they are gluten-free or gluten-containing, best to avoid them. And also, for the fruits, watch out in terms of fruits and also on the vegetables. Sa fish and seafoods, tingnan lang kung saan kayo sensitive para ma-avoid nyo rin yung mga hypersensitivity. So, common would be shrimp, no? I didn't expect yung squid dito in my result na sensitive pala ako to squid. Okay? Kasi minsan lang din ako kumakain ng squid. I'm not really fond of squid then, So, kaya siguro hindi ko rin notice na I'm sensitive to it. So, meat generally is the safest. Herbs and spices, when you put them, pakonti-konti lang. Pampalasa lang talaga. Okay? Nuts and seeds. Okay? It's also something to watch out for. Make sure na you avoid first yung mga nuts and seeds na in already in our caution and danger list. So, peanut, pistachio, cashew nut. Yun yung mga, mga nuts na mataas sa starch content or mataas sa phytotoxin content. Okay? So, I think yun lang ang ating episode for today on food allergy and sensitivity, test results, and more. And I hope to see you sa National Low Carb Day 2023. So, on October 1 na po yan, on Sunday. In case nahihirapan kayong mag-register, message yung lang yung admin natin at yung admin na, na, namin mismo yung magpa-fill up ng form for you. So, all you need to do na lang is to confirm your registration via GCash na kung ayaw nyong pumunta sa aming website. But in case meron kayong anak, or kapatid or teki sa bahay that can help you register on your own, you can still enjoy the early bird rate in the nationallowcarbday.com. And of course, for more learning, this one is just a discussion, but for more discussion on autoimmune disease, allergies, and other inflammatory diseases, it's now available in our LCF Masterclass for Allergy and Autoimmune Diseases. You can access it in Facebook. So, in Facebook natin, it's lifetime access yan. But, if you want a cheaper access and available for three months, you can get it from www.lcfmasterclass.org. So, I think yun lang. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for you to know kung ano yung mga updates natin and hindi kayo mahuli sa ating mga low-carb chikahan. So, maraming salamat everyone. Follow LCF Center sa Facebook for the legit low-carb providers available in the country. And my alternative na page would be Diet Doctora. And kung saan nyo ito napapanood ng live. Otherwise, marami na pong nagnanako ng ating names and contents na nilalagay nila sa kanilang pages pretending to be me. But I hope you know kung sino talaga yung totoo. And the food list naman na dapat unahin muna natin after making sure na by heart na ang pagkakaalam natin sa ating food list, yan, you can download it at www.jgrtanmd.com and if ever you are still not healing, kahit nakastick kayo sa safe list, you might want to get a food sensitivity test just to check. Baka gusto mo lang paniwalaan na healthy para sa iyo ang amon flour or almond milk, pero yun pala, you are sensitive to it. Or, the eggs that we eat, minsan nakaka-5 or 6 eggs a day, pero if like me, kayo pala ay sensitive then sa egg white, then you might want to cut down your egg white na consumption para hindi parating nasa defensive mode yung ating katawan. So, I think that's it. Maraming salamat, everyone. Thank you so much. So you can see all of our partners in National Low Carb Day 2023. Should you wish to become part of National Low Carb Day, message lang yung mga admins natin para tama-sama tayo mag-enjoy on October 1, 2023 in the Philippine Invest Tent. Kasama ang ating mga low-carb na mga pinakamamahal na advocates in the country. We have Tito Cecil Abad, Cecilio Abad, Ninang Anythings, of course, no? So marami yan. Mrs. B, Dolongga, 
Carla, we have Tito J, Eileen, of course, hopefully makakasali si Sir Marco Reyes pa rin this year. And of course, our low-carb doctors, Dr. Lizelle Ganunchal, Dr. Brian Castillo, Dr. Vin and Vic Legaspi, at marami pa pong iba. So, Sir Alan Pura would also be there. We have the Worth the Grind team, so Coach Nins and Coach Daniel. And of course, nandiyan din si Bata, the team of kasama na sila Kuya Gibo and Ate Shea. So see you, see, see you po. Kita-kita tayo lahat on October 1, 2023 in the Phil Invest Tent, Alabang, in Muntinlupa City. And thank you, Burp Low Carb Deli, for being our co-presenter this National Low Carb Day 2023. So maraming salamat everyone. I'll see you again next time. Remember to always stay low carb so that we all stay safe. Have a good night. Have a good day. Bye. National Low Carb Day 2023 is co-presented by Burp Low Carb Deli. We would like to thank our platinum sponsors, Perfect Match Low Carb Selections, Lorene Goodness from Coconuts, Just Go Low Carb, Chapes Keto Cakes, Naturals, Pep D, and Sweet Best. We also would like to thank our gold sponsors, Keto Mojo, Health Max Care, Gabri's, Cafe Viva, and Keto Zone. Also, Keto Casina for our silver sponsors. See you! Thank you so much for watching. Mahalagang paalala, hindi po ako nag e ng meal mix nuts, super meal mix, veggie noodles, at iba pang produkto na iligal na gumagamit ng aking pictures at videos. Paano malalaman if yan ay scammer? Number one, tingnan nyo yung page. Kakaunti lang yung followers nun because my page, Dr. Josephine Grace Rohotan, nasa 952,000 followers na po. Number two, magkitingnan nyo ng maigi, edited yung mga pictures and videos na ginagamit nila nang wala kong pahintulot. And number three, kapag kiniklik nyo, meron pang idadirect kayo sa isang website outside page na yon. So remember na wala pong magic sa pagpapagaling. Nasa tamang pagkain at lifestyle lamang. Magpaaraw, mag-exercise, at kumain ng natural and whole foods. Remember, stick to our safe list of JGC Rojo food list. At yung food list na ito is downloadable for free sa www.jgrtanmd.com. And of course, if you need low-carb suppliers na legit, meron po yan sa ating official LCF partners. Paano malalaman? Just make sure na pa-follow kayo sa ating Facebook na LCF Center. And of course, yung diet doktora natin, dyan nakalista yung ating mga legit low-carb providers. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channels, Dr. Josephine Grace Rohotan. And for more learning, make sure to enroll in our LCF Masterclass by yours truly. Stay low-carb, stay safe. Maraming salamat po. Till next time, bye!